What is going on guys, Monk7Mad here today with a brand new tutorial and this one is actually a really nice tutorial uh, for general graphic knowledge and that's going to be showing you how to make your own custom shapes. Now very recently I've been uh, always sort of trying to make uh, some pretty nice backgrounds uh, as always and I always seem to use social media sites and things a lot and uh, I did seem just to get a bit sick and tired of dragging the picture in and then editing it or dragging in a PNG and rasterizing it so I thought why not just make it simpler and put everything in the software at once and this is a really great thing I mean you get the chance to completely make whatever you want and transform it more or less into a piece which can be singly edited in Photoshop I mean you can do all the stuff to it that you would normally but you do get a really nice experience of just being able to simply work just within the software as opposed to having to keep go out to find things. Now this is actually a pretty straightforward tutorial and it actually involves the pen tool um, and this tutorial uh, I guess you can sort of treat it as a little bit of a um, practice session for the next video which I'm going to be doing which is I'm going to start a small mini series showing you how to make your very own YouTube background from scratch including the AI files um, which you can use to take into Cinema 4D and that's uh, going to be the next tutorial or tutorials, small little mini series um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to transform some stuff uh, into, the, into custom shapes, I'll also put a pack in the description at the end of a few of the custom ones that I've made already uh, I do plan on using sort of existing ones, you can turn any sort of thing into one that you want just depends what you're sort of after. I mean, if I was to use. That's one I'm probably going to use quite a lot. Facebook, that's probably a pretty big one that people are going to be using, or one that people will use a lot. So, I'm going to get an image, you can be any image you want uh, to transform into. I highly recommend the Metro Icons pack, which I've mentioned before in a previous video, but you can get them from Deviant Art from the creator, I can't remember his name offhand, but he's done a fantastic job at uh, making all of these, so a big thanks to him. And you can choose whatever sort of one you want, um, so if we to go with this one for example, just for the timing, just so I can demonstrate how this sort of works. Actually let's do this one because it's going to be a lot simpler and quicker. So. We're going to drag our image in and we're going to get the pen tool and it doesn't matter what scale you make this for the time being so long as you get as much detail as you can to make things a little bit better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the layer and I'm going to go and get the pen tool on the left hand side. I could alternatively press the letter P on the keyboard for the shortcut. And you want to make sure at the top of the screen that you've got the option path enabled and you just go through the drop down list and choose path and when you've got your path just uh, go onto your document you can make a new layer if you want but it doesn't actually affect this one thing I will advise you to do though is if you go to windows and click on the paths option so you get the path tab on the right hand side here and what we're going to do is we're just going to draw around this and if you hold shift um, while going around straight edges as I've said in some videos before it locks the pen to a degree angle so that it can keep things perfectly straight and with curved edges you want to click and you want to just drag the handle out and if you hold shift with that it also locks the handle to a straight line uh, which can be particularly helpful it doesn't matter if you're not very good with the pen so I'm, I'm terrible with it most of the time uh, look at that, that's that's pure professional right there. Uh, I'll go back and fix that in a minute, let's just finish the shape first. And this is also a good way to show you how to edit the path as well. Most of the time I spend doing this, uh, I do in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, because it's a little bit simpler um, in terms of tools. But if you wanted to edit the path after you've drawn it, one thing you can do is if you go to, where is it here? two from the pen down once you get like a black arrow um, which is similar to the the movement one but it looks more like your actual um, mouse that you'll see on your screen when just moving around general tasks and that's called a path selection tool 
Uh, and the shortcut key is the letter A. What we actually want to do is we want to go on direct selection. Now, if we click on the path, it'll bring up all of the little points that we've made. And we can move these as we like. Uh, I'm trying to get zoomed in as close as I can without those pixels appearing. Um, but yeah, you can reposition things, which is really handy. Um, because that means even if you have made a bit of a mistake, then you can always sort of go back and make your adjustments like so. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's being just a custom shape, but you don't want things to go a bit too much. Now, let's just say that. Does this work in here too? Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Just checking something. Right. If you've actually got a path and it is a curved path you'll get these handles that are generated now with the handles it generates one on either side of the what's known as the anchor point which is the central point and if you actually drag one of the handles it'll actually affect two parts so we've got the lower path here being affected and the top half now let's say we only wanted the top half to be affected not the bottom half a lot of people get very confused how to do this so one way you can do this and I well I say the best way of doing it is to get the handle that you don't want so this half we don't want this half moved if we do click and drag it into the center on the anchor point and let go provided we land on the center it'll actually remove that second handle so that we only have one handle active and therefore you don't have to worry anymore because you can move this as much as you like and there's nothing underneath it or under the anchor point that's getting reshaped or resized and it's such a pest when that does happen uh, I've had to sort of go through that a lot and it's taken a little while to actually work this out um, <clears throat> there probably is a tutorial somewhere but at the time I couldn't find one despite my effortless looking uh, for it but it's an extremely handy tip and you can just sort of position this as neatly as you can anyway when you've done your shape <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is you want to go up to edit and you want to go to define custom shape now if you're not on your path or you haven't drawn a path then that option will be uh, grayed out like these at the moment like the content aware and fill etc and that just says basically you know you haven't got a path it can't find it please make a path so we're going to define a custom shape and as you can see there we've got the general shape as you can find and we're just going to name this sort of Facebook logo and click OK. If you wanted to see the path it was just more so that you can check that there is a path. If you click on the path tab you'll see it as a work path. If you're doing multiple paths, that's a lot of paths to take in. If you're doing multiple logos, then you might want to rename this to something else. So this can be, let's just name it FB logo. And then you can make more and more without having a worry of overlap. But uh, I'd suggest you only do one path at a time. So that is it for the actual making of the shape. Now to actually access it, um, if I just turn that off, where is it? Where is my control? Oh, I've locked the layer, so I can't grab hold of it. Uh, so, right, so let's just delete this for a minute. And we're going to go over to. Well, this is probably what it looks like. Probably either a square or something. Fall beneath the pen, we've got the shape option. And if you go in there and hold on your left mouse button, you can choose through the options available. And we've got the custom shape tool at the bottom. And what it does is it will automatically place it at the bottom so here it is and you can fill it with any color you like so if I was just to go with a blue for the moment if I was now to draw this and hold shift to lock it proportionally you can see if I move that out of the locked layer section you can see that we have our Facebook logo as a custom shape and we can rescale this and we can scale it up and it keeps quite a nice um, proportion now that's pretty much it for today's tutorial it's really handy um, you can go through and make pretty much anything the one example that I'm going to very quickly show you 
that I did find a bit more tricky was ones like Twitch, where you have to do it in several parts to, to actually maintain it, because we've got the, that was a long bit, because we've got sort of the, the backing section, and then you'll notice on the Twitch logo that there's like a, a smaller version of this on the inside of it, but to make sure that it had exactly the same shape, because you can see down here the um, end bit is slightly different to the in in a, in a piece. So I've done that in several parts, and you just change the color on say one of those layers, and I had to do the split two pieces like the pause button as well separately, but you would just um, just take it in small pieces, you can turn it into multiple shapes, you can turn it uh, quite easily, it, it's just more of a small time consuming process, but it's really handy to have, and if you wanted to make a copy, or let's say a backup of the custom shapes that you make, if you go to, let me just delete all these, so we've just got the Facebook one, um, if we wanted to make a backup of our shapes, you can go to the, let me think, where is it? Well, let's just do it the other way to, to what I normally would. You'd go to something like a paintbrush, and you'd open up the paintbrush option, and on the right-hand side, you've got a settings cog. I suppose you can do it with the custom shapes as well. Can you? Yeah. So you've got a, a settings cog, and you just click on that, and let's say you go to the presets manager. You can scroll through all of your shapes, and you can select the ones you want to save, so maybe the Facebook, and the Twitch and the Twitter, and then you just go to save set, desktop, and you name it uh, social set, save it. If I now delete these from here and click done, so you can see that they no longer exist down here. If I now go back um, as in to open it up, you don't have to do the whole stage, I'm just saying it show you that it does work you get your social set I always paste it where it supposedly meant to go uh, so I'll paste it in there and click load and now you'll see that they've loaded in and you can still draw these um, so that's gonna be it for today's tutorial I advise you just go through and make yourself a few I've put some in the description as a little bit of a Kickstarter I've done some of the uh, clan ones as well such as dare etc just to make things a little bit more interesting and it's particularly handy for 2d background editors as well so that's going to be it for me guys thank you for watching today's tutorial i hope you enjoy it i hope that uh, you stick around my channel and take a look at some of the new videos that will be coming out uh, over the next few days uh, so that's going to be it for me guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and as always take care